Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan Butler. This episode, we are basically just correcting an error that I made in the last episode in the playlist, if you're watching this in playlist order, which is episode number 119. So this is episode 119.1. Uh, I learned something recently that uh, put some question into one of the products that I took a look at last time, and I want to make sure to clarify that for those of you who are interested in the Family Guy Star Wars product line. Now, the downside is, of course, that all four of those episodes of that Family Guy coverage have already been released. This is being produced about a week or whatever after the fact and inserted into the playlist. So for those watching these as they come out, it's just looking back on a recent episode saying, oh, hey, that clarifies things. If you're watching them in the playlist order, though, it might be a little bit confusing. So bear in mind, this is being produced after the fact and will not be able to be referenced, of course, in part two, three, or four of that Family Guy coverage because it was already recorded previously. So when we took a look in episode 119 at the Family Guy Presents Blue Harvest Star Wars special, the parody, we said it started out with a single release back in 2008. But aside from the single release, you could also get that special edition with all the extra goodies and the special version of the DVD inside that includes that 3D scene and whatnot, which also means altered packaging to note the 3D scene. And we pointed out how the very next year, alongside the release of Something 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 Dark Side, which is covered in episode number 120 of this series, we had a release or a re-release of Blue Harvest marked as having a digital copy with it, and that different looking back when it comes to explaining what the digital copy actually is. We also saw in episode 122, or you will see if you're watching this in playlist order, that there were some box sets released of the Family Guy Star Wars specials. We had the Family Guy 2-pack that has just the first two in it on DVD, and we had the Laugh It Up Fuzzball Trilogy set, which includes all three. This is the DVD version because we are talking about DVD releases, not Blu-ray, in this supplemental episode. Well, see, here's basically what happened. I knew that around the same time in 2008 that we saw this release of a special version, that yes, we also got an individual release. But a lot of times if there's an individual release, like say with the Star Wars films, uh, the original trilogy being released in 1990 or 1992 on VHS, if I've got a boxed set that includes something in it, I don't generally go back and buy those individual things that are in it if the regular retail release is exactly the same as what's in that slipcase. And the only difference is literally the slipcase packaging that it's in. Now that meant that when I showed you that first release of Family Guy Blue Harvest without being a special edition from 2008, what I pulled out, and you may recall me remarking on this, was one from a box set, hence no UPC there, having that sticker over the top of it. I had pulled this out of the 2010 DVD set, Lap It Up Fuzzball, because Lap It Up Fuzzball was purported as simply taking those original releases and putting them into one package. That's why, in kind of a weird way, if you open this up and take a look, you'll find that there's not a digital copy included for the Empire Strikes Back special, something, something, something dark side, but there is one because it was included originally on DVD for the Return of the Jedi special, It's a Trap. So it just seemed as though, oh, it's just those original releases just being shoved into a case here. Well, it turns out that's not exactly accurate because the version that's in there is the same version of Family Guy Blue Harvest on DVD that we would find in this set here. And all that it was was that regular packaging with just the disc inside with no disc number listed on top because it was the only disc in the package. My assumption was this was it. This was that original release. I don't need to go buy it again. Turns out that YouTuber Max Volume was able to set me straight on this, and it turns out that no. They seem to have changed their approach. As they got to 2009, if you wanted a digital copy, you had to get this one. That was a separate release. And any box sets, 2009, 2010, didn't matter, just had the one disc in it for Blue Harvest. They changed the approach. And in fact, the individual release of Family Guy Presents Blue Harvest from back in 2008, the one that was released alongside the special edition, actually did have a digital copy in it at the time. It, was, it wasn't so much that this version from 2009 was all of a sudden giving us a digital copy, so much as it was giving us the same digital copy as previously, marking it as such, but then the two box sets that year and the next 
took it out for some bizarre reason. So now that I actually have gone through and bought an individual copy of the 2008 version of Family Guy Presents Blue Harvest as a regular DVD, not the special edition, I want to show you that now. This is the actual release from 2008, not one pulled from that later box set. I've learned my lesson on that one here. The front is the same as we saw then, the same thing with the spine, the same thing with the back, except just not a sticker covering up the UPC, no big deal. But when you open it up, it's much more like that 2009 release. We have the regular Disc 1, labeled as Disc 1. We have the digital copy down here with uh, Lois as Leia and R2-D2 there. And of course, to explain how to get the digital copy off of that Disc 2, we have our slip here. All things we've seen before and looked at in detail in episode number 119, but we hadn't really understood, or I hadn't really understood, let me be honest here, I hadn't really understood exactly how it was released at the time. So to put this into context, what this means is something kind of weird. That they decided apparently that digital copies were worthwhile, because not only was it in 2008, but in that special relabeled one with the white and orange up at the top, for a separate single release of the film in 2009. But they apparently either wanted it to match something, something, something dark side, or just didn't see the value in including a digital copy with the DVD when you got to the two pack. And if it was about inconsistency between the two different ones in here, one would have a digital copy, one would not, they seem to have not given a crap about that by the time we got to the box set in 2010, because in this one, only one of them has a digital copy, and it's not the first one, which did have a digital copy to begin with. A little bit confusing there, but thank you very much, Max Volume, for helping clear up that confusion for me. Hope that didn't lead anybody astray. Thankfully, if you do go looking around for this on eBay, this, the one with a digital copy, is the one you're going to find, because it's very rare for someone to sell one of these, having pulled all the DVDs out of it and put it out there separately. You know, I just tried to cut a corner thinking this was just like the Star Wars releases from 1992, 2000, 97, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And hey, I could just grab the one from here and it would be the same thing as in 2008 with the original release. That makes logical sense. Turned out not to be what actually happened. So shame on me on that one. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching. Again, I apologize for the confusion. May the Force be with the home video viewers.